Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from Jacksonville. Returning it, Justice Hill. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see, they come off the fact that he can run it, throw it, and scares defenses every time he takes a snap. And he's going to have a Ravens first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. Good sign here early. Everybody on offense there up front in the backfield in sync on that play. So much talk about what do you do to neutralize home field advantage. Well, teams that run the football effectively, they often have a way of neutralizing it in a big way when they have those types of runs. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. Zero hesitation that time. That was get ball, throw ball. Yeah, turn into a smoke route. If you see the coverage off the receiver, doesn't matter whether you call it a run or not. Just take the ball, get it out to him. Edwards now on first and 10. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. Right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and nine. From midfield now, here's Jackson. Setting up the screen here to Edwards. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game so third and two this quite possibly four down territory though if they're stopped and they'll try and run the option to pick it up and that would go nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards it's a loss of a full three yards and it brings up fourth down boy you know some plays you can just sort of tell they're not going to work from the start and that was one of them right there yeah i mean he had every option taken away and so all that was left for him to do was to try and keep it himself, but even he knew that he had nowhere to go. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out, and this defense delivers a turnover on downs on the very first drive of the afternoon. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be led out by a man who took that huge jump everyone had hoped for in year two, one of the game's brightest young stars, and that's Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational-type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw taken in by Wrigley here. Touchdown, Jack The Jaguars will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. Well, they said that they wanted to get him involved early, and what a way to cap their opening drive, Charles. We know he's one of the fastest receivers in the NFL, and he showcased it on that play. And when you have a guy like that, you want to make sure the defense sees him early, right? You want to see how they're going to adjust, how they're going to try and guard him, because they can't replicate his speed in practice unless they've got one of the few guys who are as fast as he is. And all it took was one drive, he burned him, and I don't think it's the last time they called his number in this one.
after the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Justice Hill. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. He finds the rookie, Zay Flowers. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Jackson going to keep it running right. Only a yard on the keeper, and it'll be second down. Jackson. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 22 yards there, a first down. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's going to leak out of the backfield to his right, then angle his way up the field, and a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Jackson, options out left. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Second down and six now. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. Oh, and this one, him may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. Here is third and five. Now it's Jackson. They set up the screen to Hill. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Five yards on the screen, but that'll take us to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get on the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And that is no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come up perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They've got the 7 nothing lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop, CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind to, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Now Lawrence. And that nearly intercepted. Boy, for a guy known for his hands defensively, that's a ball he probably thinks he should have come up with. And instead, it's fourth down. 
<laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they were in field goal range last time out but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. That second down play, that's a minus four. To me, that's a superior play by the backer because he was allowed to, I think, run free on it and make that play. His defensive linemen, they covered things down for him because offensive guys, the linemen, what they're trying to do, as you know, is block the guy at the point of attack. There he goes, left side. Now inside the 25 and down to the seven yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you what, third down, all you're thinking is, what can we do to keep this drive going to get enough yardage to move the sticks? You're certainly not thinking about taking this one almost the length of the field, but that's exactly what happens here. What a play and what a change of fortunes. Jackson now. This is caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Charlie Kohler, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens are an extra point away from drawing level. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Justin Tucker for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter and we're tied 7-7. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And that is caught. It's Ridley. And they worked this well up field across the 45 a good pick up there 21 yards a big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10 Lawrence will throw he'll get this out to the flat for ETN and he'll work it across midfield inside the 45 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. 
Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Here's a second and eight. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he's going to be down close to a first down at the Ravens 33. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Lawrence. I uh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Going for it, here's ETN. And he's not even going to come close to picking up the first. They stop him right at the line of scrimmage. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. The drive will start with an option going left. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Pretty nice play here. They go read option, read the defensive end, and when he collapsed down inside, how about the quarterback pulling it, keeping it, and not only getting to the second level, but picking up some really nice yardage. Very, very well read. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But they certainly did a nice job there, picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with it. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Second and ten. Up the middle, here's Edwards. And a good stiff arm and some space to run. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. These two teams all tied after one. Raven football here as we begin quarter number two. As they've got it with a first and ten. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. The improv on the scramble there gets him six and it'll be second down. Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 25-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Finds his man over the middle. It's likely that he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Just need a yard here, second and one. Now a shotgun handoff to Hill. And the Ravens are going to have a first and goal as he's able to take this inside the 10 to the 8.
From the gun, it's Jackson. That is caught. It's Bateman for a Raven touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass, and the Ravens have taken the lead. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. to Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Jaguars again ready to take over on offense. That 7 0 lead of theirs short lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula to get them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. And they'll go again with ETN. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. And that's complete ETN out of the backfield. Call it a gain of a yard, and it'll be second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Put a man in motion left, Ridley. Here's a fake on the jet sweep, and instead a give up the middle. And once again, they stop it behind the line. Great job by this Ravens defense. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. The job of any linebacker involves having enough strength to fight off a blocker and get to ball carriers. But in this case, I think we can safely say he beat them right off the snap to get into the backfield and make that play. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Defense. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. The catch and run pays off to the tune of 35 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. 
They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Lawrence. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Well, every point certainly counts at this stage of the game, but after driving so far, you absolutely know they want to finish it with six instead of three. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Rocky Sin. And the Ravens are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. And that felt like a little extra pressure on that third down attempt, and their mistake cost them points because they're inside the red zone. So you know you've got at least a field goal waiting for you. And in this case, they end up with nothing. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Now their last two drives, both ending in touchdowns, it's got them this 14-7 lead. And it looks to me, and I think you're probably seeing the exact same thing, they're in an ideal spot now to create some separation. The way that they're functioning on offense now, they can create a pretty good gap, allows their defense to play with a little more verb and confidence. A big article in the paper this morning about them stringing possessions together for consecutive touchdowns. Well, right here, they're trying to make it three in a row. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Jackson options out left. And this looks a lot like the last play. Behind the line of scrimmage, he's tackled for the second straight go around. Great job by this Jacksonville D. Well, there they went blitz defensively, Charles, and things were paved well coming from the linebacker position. I love the way that you described it, paved well. Oftentimes, the guy who gets home on the blitz, he's going to get all the credit, but his teammates did all the dirty work, right? They ran into people on purpose. They sometimes tugged on jerk. That's caught inside the 20. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 66 yards. I'll tell you what, this is not going to be a fun discussion at halftime for this defense. They've been absolutely taken advantage of in the first half. And here's another play for big, big yardage. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Jackson going to run. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Jackson from the shotgun. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Isaiah Likely, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Ravens go up by two touchdowns. For good reason, quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Tucker now for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to The drive summary that time, five plays. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. 
A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. And I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Straight ahead, ETN. And he'll scratch out a yard up to the 30, and that's all. The Jaguars on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and five. Looking to throw Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard game. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're going to need to hit on if they're going to get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves, but this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. Let's go, yo. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Off the option, here's ETN. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there, second down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> now Lawrence to throw. Throw right side, caught by Ridley. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 24-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. At that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. ETN up the middle. And he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. This second and four. Back to throw. Lawrence. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Zay Jones was the intended receiver. And it's third and four. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown, Evan Ingram. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Jags have cut it back within a score. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Now McManus for the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. 
And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And right now, we've got a little bit of an offensive masterpiece going on both sides, moving the football, scoring points. It's almost like somebody put the defense on rookie mode in this one. I mean, we haven't even left the first half, Charles, and we're certainly on pace for a shootout. An excellent start for both offenses. The fans have to be enjoying this to seeing all these points go up on the board. As a former defender, you know I'm not enjoying this at all, but right now, both these teams just trading haymakers. Let's see if anyone slips up first. Can anyone counter with a nice little jab and get things going in their direction? Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From the 29, here's second down and five. To throw is Jackson. No hesitation, goes right back to Likely. And a good job there getting to him quickly after the catch as he's brought down right at the midfield stripe. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. From midfield now, here's Jackson. A window closed up there, and it's behind him and incomplete. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now it's Jackson. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 31-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw complete there to Bateman. And down to the 20, he'll go before heading out of bounds. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. From the red zone now, here's Jackson on first down. And it's caught. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Ravens will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. And what I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Now Tucker to add the PAT. He's got it as they double up the lead. This one's now 28-14. A drive that time of six plays. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. On first down, Lawrence. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. Picked off by Rocky Sin. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. An unfortunate sequence there. Trying to get points before intermission, but now the interception. And their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it. And that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Ooh. 
After the interception, here's Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Now Jackson. And he is caught. And they are going to have a first down, and they're in field goal range as well as they're down inside the 20. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Jackson. That's going to be caught. Touchdown. Nelson Aguilar. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens have moved out in front by three touchdowns. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there. Unable to do so, that makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Tucker now to add the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Just a four-play drive that time. And it was capped by the touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Jaguars ready to go on offense for the final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Caught on the right side by Jones. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Come on, boys. Let's power up. Draw play, ETN. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Two yards to go, second down. Lawrence. And it's complete. He gets this one to Washington. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. This is where you step up. Right here, baby. Let's go now, let's go. 
Now Lawrence on first down. And he'll get it right back to Washington. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Our leaders got a solid performance out of their quarterback in the first half. He's over 300 yards passing already as he's looking to possibly put his name in the record book. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around, they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it, and they've run it well here to start the second half. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From the 48-yard line, here's second and a yard. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. throw this out wide and complete it to Ridley. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the Ravens 39-yard line. Here's a give to ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. An unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. On third down, Lawrence. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 17-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. There's completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. A handoff for ETN. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Tackle there by Michael Pierce. They work now on second and nine. ETN once more. 
And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne from 17 yards out. And the Jaguars are able to cut into this lead as they score on the opening drive of the second half. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard and you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Extra point from McManus is good. And the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And he'll gonna sit on this one and it'll come out to the 25. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Now it's Jackson. He'll find Bateman once more. A Jackson to Bateman there for the Baltimore first. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Here's Jackson. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Again, Jackson. The short one there caught by Likely. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And they'll be facing a third and 12. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. On third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. The touch and time here critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. The Ravens send their punter out now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. Fielded at the 20. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. As the offense returns, let's take a look at running back Travis Etienne. And you see the last drive, great chunk of yardage, the touchdown on five carries. And offensively, everything just looked in sync, didn't it? It did, and, and the reason that it was in sync is because it's a combination of play calling, game plan, offensive line marrying up with all of their blocks. But don't forget the receivers out on the perimeter. Any type of a long run, the receivers have had a hand in that because they've occupied people downfield. And of course, give the big credit to the man with the football. Great vision, good movement, gets to the end zone. Pushing through the contact, and he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. 101 yards rushing for him now to this point.
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as he's able to get about three that time on third and inches. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now an option play on second down. And no pitch there and no chance either as he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And that play there, boy, almost looked like it was a video game and he <laughs> didn't know what the pitch button was. Not very well executed. Yeah, and if you don't know what it is, you better figure it out fast. I suggest knowing it before you actually run that play. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 22. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the 25, here's second down and seven. They stay on the ground. This time it's Hill. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. What we saw there, that's what we know that he can do. He can break tackles and turn them into big runs, and that's what he did. And what is the buzz phrase nowadays in football for a guy like that? Contact balance. The ability to go through trash, come out the other side, avoid and run through contact, and keep your balance. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Jackson, option right. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. He'll get eight on the keeper there. It'll be second and a couple. But that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Throw caught by Flowers. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Now Jackson on first down, complete to Likely. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. Brings up second and five at the Jaguars' 18-yard line. Jackson. That's complete to his receiver, Bateman. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down.
To throw again is Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. Short completion, just four yards, and that's going to bring up second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Throwing is Jackson. Checks this down to Edwards out of the backfield. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. From the gun, Jackson. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Isaiah Likely from six yards away as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. Well, after another passing touchdown, I don't think it'd be an understatement to say that he's in the zone, and I believe he likes it. Tucker now for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And finishing that drive off was the touchdown grab by Isaiah Likely. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Travis Etienne of the Jags offense set to take over again here. He's up over 100 yards and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's a combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards, picking up the first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, Lawrence. And that one going to come up short, low throw. A second and 10 forthcoming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Jags first down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give them a short yardage situation here for second down. Lawrence will throw. A short throw to Ingram. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Again, 
Now Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. The result only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Finds a tight end in the middle of the field. Just a simple stick route. Decent gain. Doesn't get you a whole lot, but it's pretty reliable, isn't it? And tough to defend. They'll work from the 36 on second and six. Again, it's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run with ETN. Who with a juke. And just shutting him off there. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It always seems like a lightning bolt when you get a big run on third and inches. But in this case, all the credit has to go to the offensive line. They out leveraged the defensive front and created a gap for him to get through and create that big time run. They come out with one back and three tight ends. ETN gonna be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Jaguars have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. This is where, as a tight end, you've got to really sell that this is a run. They're going to fake the give, hope the linebackers bite, and here they do just enough. That split second, that's all it takes for that tight end to leak out into the end zone. Touchdown. McManus's point after is good, and the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Hill is going to take it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. On second down, here's the option. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Well, we just saw the recipe for success right there. Big body, strong, agile, playing with great leverage and hands. Not really able to be blocked on that play. Close things down inside. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the second time.
Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10, right at the 30. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. Lawrence. He completes it to Ridley. It's a big play for the Jaguars. 47 yards. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was ripe for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. A give to ETN running right. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Here we go. Got to have it. Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down, and the Ravens are going to get the football back. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game, and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator now that they're 0 for 2. If they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> And they'll run the option to start the drive. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A big time gain there on the keeper using his legs to hurt him. First down. First play of the drive, a first down run. Well, that sets you up for whichever way you want to go. Do you come right back and run the football again because you've got them on their heels? Or do you play chess match with them, break tendency, and go play action and go for the big shot? That's going deep for Bateman. This is caught inside the 15. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Rashad Bateman with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now Tucker to add the PAT. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Out of the end zone comes Johnson. They had tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. Out comes Calvin Ridley and the offense for their next drive. He's been a load for them to handle defensively. I know that much. Well, look at him. He's got seven catches on the game, and he's starting to shred them a little bit because not only is he catching them, he's picking up good yardage, keeping the chains moving, ball control, you name it. This big guy, what did you say? He's been a load for them to handle? That's right. He's Agreed. Been, this has seven catches, as you said, over 100 yards. A good pickup there, 21 yards. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And he drops it incomplete, and their struggles continue here. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and 10. Here's Lawrence. And they'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. well. Those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. What we just saw there, that's really been a common theme all afternoon. Not a lot of pressure. That forced the errant pass. He's been under duress this entire afternoon. He just had to unload that when he's fortunate. It was just incomplete and not intercepted. Again on second and ten, it's Lawrence. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Now Lawrence. Buying time to his left. Boy, he almost did that himself, but it looks like he's about a foot or two short. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. Thanks to his effort, they now have a big choice to make here. He just ran them into field goal range with that one, so here come the choices. Do they kick it here, or do they trust him to make another big play and possibly get a first down? All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. And they'll try and throw for it with Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. And all oh, this is going to depend on forward progress. But they're saying no, he didn't get there. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. And that makes him now 0 for 3 on fourth down attempts. A lot of people would say they're showing a lot of guts going for it this many times on fourth down. I think they'd have to start thinking with their head a little bit more than with their gut and their emotions because it's not working for them. They've got to figure out what's been going wrong. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their 38. They'll run with Edwards here to begin the drive. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. 
And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Now third down and seven. Now it's Jackson. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Partner, you and I have struggled with this for years. You've got the lead, just take care of the football and burn some of that clock. But there's something to be said for not taking your foot off the gas as well, because you can never have too big of a cushion. That one, though, falls incomplete. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Here's Lawrence to throw. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got a man complete. He's still on his feet. Touchdown, Jaguars. Zay Jones, 93 yards. And the Jaguars are able to cut into that deficit. And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now, it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game, they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. He's got it to the 43 here. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Oh, 
On third down, here's Edwards. And he'll be well short of a first down as he stopped again right at the line of scrimmage. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This to make it a three-score game late. He's got the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this will remain a two-touchdown game. Well, this one now not over yet, Charles. You've got a sliver of hope on that other sideline. You certainly do, because that would have made it a three-score game, and that probably would have been curtains at that point. But now if they can get down the field quickly and somehow get the ball back one more time, we may have a different ball game. This is first and ten. Throwing to start the drive. Lawrence. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. I wonder if they're wandering back to the huddle thinking to themselves, can we just hit rewind and go back a play? Definitely not the down they wanted to begin this drive by giving up a sack. But for the defense, that's exactly how they drew it up. Keeps himself upright. What a sequence there defensively. You get the sack to move him to third and long. Then here, just nothing available. And he's got to throw it away. Here now, third down. Back to throw. Lawrence. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The Ravens taking a knee with victory seemingly in hand here. Down to a knee goes Jackson, and that should seal it. So the final seconds tick away in this Baltimore victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them. This one is now planted. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.